So today I'm unbeaten with the fastest mole in magic. Seemingly no one can stop all our hasty threats and we are built to punish any deck that can't keep pace with our strategy. Hey everyone, Hex here and today I'm smashing my way through the ladder with a hasty deck featuring one very large mole. Currently unbeaten, so I couldn't wait to showcase this little brew that I've been having a ton of fun with today. Firstly, let me start by asking though if you can drop a like and consider subscribing if you haven't. I'm so very grateful for all the support that you give this channel as we continue to grow. But enough of that, let's jump straight into our hasty strategy and our big surprise in Ansrag, the Quake Mole. It's a 4 mana 8-4 that gives you an additional combat phase whenever it's blocked. This ability can be very nice in a few situations, but today our mole is going to get haste and hit very hard very quickly. That's because I'm running Stormseekers and Halana and Elenas. Both creatures give haste and Halana is particularly good against bats and fairies. Indeed, these two actually work really well together. If your triggers are stacked correctly, you target your Halana and Elena with your werewolf, then use its increased power to give more power to something else. So what better way to leverage a hasty gruel deck in one of my favourite cards in Magic, that is Samut. It's 2-3 vigilant hasty stats are great and says whenever a creature does damage to your opponent if it etb this turn and draw a card well we get to draw a lot of cards in this deck i've got swift spears and code breakers to help do just that the constant damage is a lot for our opponents especially if they feel they've stabilized after a board wipe or two ruby is an all-star on turn two if it survives but helps a turn four anzrag as does charming scoundrel you want to nearly always make a treasure with this creature as it helps get some board presence out quickly and the scoundrel also works really well with Godric because it creates two permanents to help give this creature flying. Literally all our creatures work so well with each other in this deck. Interaction wise, Kamano is a given in the one drop slot. Removal in Animus Might. This card can potentially do 16 damage to an opponent's creature if you use your mole to bite another creature. A copy of Twinferno can help both clear multiple creatures but also surprise double strike, potentially allowing your mole to survive an attack with its first strike really helps in this deck. And finally, Tyvar Stand. Well, what can I say about this card today? It is the glue needed to enable all of our plays. If this is in my opener, I am very happy. Today I've got 25 lands including crucial plazas and that is the deck. I have tried so many other cards today, Hajar, Miglos, Goro Goro, Squee, Thundering Raiju, Axbane Ferox, Monstrous Rage, the list truly goes on but this current iteration is currently unbeaten at 7-0 so I'm pretty happy and I don't think they add enough to this build to include them at the moment. As always though I really want to hear your thoughts on Anzrag in the comments below. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll catch you again in the next video. All right then, on the play, and this hand's pretty nice. We have our Reckless Stormseeker and Anzrag mini combo. In fact, the more I look at our hand, this could be our kind of god hand with the Tyvar stand as well. Let's see how this one goes. We'll play Ruby, and uh, we'll just smash opponent with a Rafine's Tower. Just got to hope this Ruby survives. Could have held open the stand, but I think we're going to need that later. It does survive, so let's go for Stormseeker. Only attack with the Stormseeker here, holding open Tyvar stand, because next turn we're going to play our Soken Zan, give Anzrag haste, and smash our opponent for a massive amount. See what they're up to here. Okay, Virtue on our Stormseeker. As I kind of predicted, they would have a removal spell this turn. Dropping the Tyvar stand protects it, and yeah, this is the last thing I think they're going to expect. A hasty 8-4 mole, I guess it's a 9-4 mole. And uh, we're going to take the opponent all the way down to 2 on turn 4. Had we had a one turn 1 like Swift Spear or something, they could be dead now. We have two hasty creatures in our hand, so I don't know how the opponent's going to get out of this one. Anzrag here being used as just a massive, powerful attacker rather than using its cool ability, but opponent does have a Leyline Binding. Might be a little bit too late though. And another Binding as well, okay. So they are fully equipped here, but we have a Lethal in two different ways. We will do it with Godric and attack our opponent down for a nice little turn five win there. All right, on the draw and yeah, the hand is reasonable. We have a restless ridge line, meaning we are going to be playing slightly off curve. Hmm. We're not really going to be playing a card here with our current hand till turn three, but 
We'll keep opponent with a tapped marsh. And we found a forest, so that's pretty nice. I think what we'll do here, instead of playing Ruby, which is going to attract a removal spell, we'll play the Scoundrel. That will create a treasure, so um, if it does get removed, at least we have some added value on the board. Opponent with Lazav. Okay, not a card I have ever seen really work too much. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a 2-mana two 2-3 two, with a little bit of value. And a Mastermind... Okay, well, we will uh, not worry too much about that because we have a little play here with Ruby. Then we can play a Swift Spear. We can use our Animus Might here to uh, take care of this Mastermind and attack our opponent for three. I think that's the best thing to do. There's no way for us to kill Lazav. We can do double damage with the Animus Might, but the three toughness on Lazav makes it a little bit tricky to deal with. And yeah, we'll just uh, attack our opponent here for three. Next turn, we have Halana or Anzrag available. Fortunately, we have no haste giver on the battlefield right now. Here's the bat, everyone's best friend. I wonder what they nab. I think the annoying thing is that they are going to see what we are <laughs> trying to conjure with the uh, hasty mole. But Okay, cut down, sure. Takes care of Ruby. I think that was a good play there. Ruby is the card that... It's kind of us keeping us in the game a little bit here with the mana. Okay, another Halana is not too bad. They don't know we have that. So we'll play a Halana here. Presumably this is going to get removed on their turn and then we can surprise them with another one if we draw a land that is. But we'll spread the wealth here and attack our opponent with two creatures. So a uh, slower game for us here. Yeah, go for the throat on our Halana and Elena. But they're down to two cards. The thing with their deck is they're just going to create a lot of value from the clues. So it would be nice if we can find a way to deal with their Lazav. And there is a way underneath this bat. But there's no way we're going to kill this bat without a removal spell. And if we found a removal spell, I'll just want to use it on their 2-3 anyway. Finding a land's good for us. We'll play Halana and Elena. And uh, attack our opponent here for 6. So we're kind of outpacing them in the little race here. Preacher. Okay, that is a bit annoying for us. Oh, opponent. They attack with their bat. Do they realize Halana and Elena has reach? I'm not so sure. Yeah, we get our Animus Might back. We get our removal spell back. Okay, well, this is a straightforward Anzrak. Okay, we were going to Animus Might the Preacher, give Anzrak haste and attack for lethal. But opponent has scooped it up. All right, then, on the draw. Hand is Dees. I do like having Ruby and Tyvar's stand in our opening hand. You get to play Ruby turn two, holding open the protection spell. Meaning that you should be able to drop an Andrag here turn four if we feel like it. Opponent with a Jungle Hollow goes all the way up to 21 life already. And they look like they're on a Golgari deck so far. Yeah, and tapped Glade for them. So we'll do what I just mentioned. We'll play Ruby here. Holding open Tyvar's stand, and this should allow us to have a turn three Andrak if we wanted to next turn, but okay, Liliana, fair enough. They've got an edict here to deal with our Ruby. Oh, that's a really good way to deal with our creature here. So we missed on one point of damage to our opponent's face. We will definitely drop a Samut here. I love Samut. It's such a cool card. There is no point us attacking Liliana. We might as well just attack the opponent's face. We're going to draw a card. And then if they want to up their Liliana, they're the ones that are going to be having to discard um, a card as well. But we can just discard one of the stands that we just drew. Okay, another Edict effect. All right. So these Tyvar stands, not too great in the face of our opponent's removal spells so far. Difficult game. They do find their fourth mana. And it is a Mosswood Dread Knight to draw a card, lose a life, and then they are going to use Liliana for us to discard. So we can kill Liliana this turn, and we are going to do that with probably our, or well, definitely our Godric. I guess we do have Tyvar stand available here to protect this if we need it. What we are looking for is a Stormseeker or Halana and Elena to go with our Anzrag. Would be nice if for one turn they can leave our creature alone though. 
Nope, it is a go for the throat. You know what? I'm just going to use my Tyvar stands. They've shown us they've got removal with the Edicts. Um, and this is a good opportunity for us to use the stand. There's Animus Might. Okay, well, we'll play our mole here. We'll just use Animus Might, um, Animus Might to deal with their Dread Knight. Attack our opponent for three. Okay, they're going to need a removal spell. But we are... Defense is down here. We do have a Plaza of Heroes. Okay, and there's Glissa. And our one copy of Twinferno. I think... I think we probably got lethal here. Just attack with both. See how they block. Then we'll make our move. I don't think they've got a removal spell. If they had one, I'm pretty sure they would have already fired it off. Or maybe not. Maybe they're waiting for us to use the plaza. But we'll definitely use the plaza here to uh, give our mole indestructible. Yep. So this is a clean way to deal with Glissa, an annoying card. And we're going to get two attack phases here. And the opponent, I'm pretty sure, doesn't have any removal spell. They would have already fired it off, definitely. But we attack here for lethal. Probably should have played the Twinferno um, when they declare blockers with Glissa to get some more damage. I forget it's until end of turn. But we had more than enough damage there to get through in the end anyway. All right then, on the draw. And this is definitely a hand I can get behind. If we can find our third mana pretty quickly, then I'm uh, pretty confident we can do a lot of damage pretty quickly. Oh, obviously, it all depends on what we're up against. Opponent did mulligan a couple of times. And they played a forest. Okay. So we're in a good shape here, as we did find our third and fourth lands. But I guess we don't have a play this turn, so let's just double strike here our... Uh, Swift Spear, not the best use of this card, but next turn we're going to want to use our Storm Seeker, and I can't see us using that to Inferno anytime soon, but they have three mana now. Okay, and it is a Charm, an instant, but they choose to do it on their turn. It's not changing the way I am going to attack, though. They did find a Rock Priest, so that's what we're up against. They might have wanted to use that as an instant on their turn, on our turn, sorry, as we go to attacks, because I might not have attacked, who knows. But they dropped the Rock Priest, so we're going to have to kill them pretty quickly. Halana and Elena might help with that one. And we're going to go wide here, so even if they block and kill one of my creatures, we uh, still get some damage through. So I'm just going to put some counters on the Swift Spear so we can attack through this Rock Priest. Now they could give plus three, plus three, and all sorts of spells. Another charm though. That is definitely not changing my attack. I'm just gonna hit the opponent down to two. They are gonna have two Rock Priests this turn, so we could potentially die. The Rock Priest deck has many ways to kill people without actually attacking, which is a little bit annoying. Cosmic Hunger here. Okay. They target themselves. Okay, that was a strange play. Can they kill me? I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure what that was about because um, we're going to be attacking the opponent for quite a large amount here. And I'm not going to use the Animus Might. It might uh, help them win the game here. So let's just spread the counters, spread the power around, attack our opponent. And this should be okay for lethal, I think. Yeah. They uh, can't block all that damage, and uh, we take down another opponent. All right, then, on the draw here, and we have a very, a very quick hand here. Um, whether to play the Kumano or Swift Spear, important. The opponent did play a Restless Reef. I'm just going to get a creature down. I'm just going to get this going. We can next turn Ruby into Kamano. Kamano works really well with our Godricks. Not too concerned about the Swift Spear, which normally bites the dust pretty quickly. Okay, they just passed their turn. 
So we'll go Ruby into Kumano here. Okay, well they've got some removal here, so see what they want to shoot. We'll definitely play our Kumano. If they have removal, I think they should prioritize the Ruby, unless they've got two removal spells. Okay, Bitter Triumph. Okay, well they take care of the Swift Spear to save some damage. Ruby's the card I want to stick around though, so hopefully they don't kill that one as well. But whatever happens next turn, I'm going to be attacking with a Stormseeker. They play the Modern Age to draw and discard. So up against a Demir, nerdly kind of, maybe a graveyard deck. But we're going to get in there with the Stormseeker, which gets an extra counter here from the Kamano. And that should enable Ruby as well to attack as a 3-4. So opponent down to 11. Next turn we have Tyvar's Stands to pump up our creatures. And we can attack with our Etchin, so... Yeah, opponent is taking a lot of damage here, unless they have some shenanigans this turn. Uh, I guess Path of Peril is pretty good, but it does only kill our Ruby. And this turn we can attack for a little bit of damage on board here, and it's whether do we play Tyvar Stand to get in some more. Opponent scoops up anyway. Alright then, on the draw. Okay, this hand is... 3-3 three, three drops, I'm not going to keep that. My experience playing this deck in testing means you just want to be playing uh, turn 1, turn 2 plays, get some stuff on the board, because they are going to normally deal with your um, mana dork in Ruby. I think it's good here to put our Restless Ridgeline to the bottom here. We have a nice little hand though. There's Godric, alright, we've got a very good hand actually. We'll play Kamano. I'm just really hoping that Ruby survives next turn to enable a um, a play on our turn three. Really want to pick up a land. Want a Swift Spear, okay. Well, that allows us to double spell this turn. Play Ruby, comes down as a 2-3. And we'll go for the Swift Spear rather than attacking. Get some more board presence going. Put it with a uh, Charmer deck, it looks like. And that is Hallowed Haunting, okay. All right, can we outrace a Hallowed Haunting? We haven't got too many ways to deal with enchantments. I think it's just beside you in the deck. But we'll drop Godric here, and this is a huge attack by us. I think this was the best play here. Could have played the Halana and Elena, but getting the opponent down to 10 is important. Half their life total. They can keep gaining life back with the Naturalist. But this is a big turn for them. Okay, another Naturalist makes a Spirit. Okay, are they going to be able to pop off here? Another Enchantment in Ossification, sure. Please don't take Ruby, please don't take Ruby. Okay, well they've gone for Godric. And they attack us. <laughs> Beside you, eh? Alright, well let's... I think we need to deal with Hallowed Haunting, so let's just go for the Stormseeker here. And as much as I want to put this as a land, I'm just going to deal with their Haunting. Yeah, maybe could have done that on their turn or later on in case they have uh, find a land here to enable a two drop in their hand, but we're just still going to smash with our Etchin. Don't really care if they block. They block with a Naturalist. Okay. Wasn't expecting that. I thought they were going to block with a 2 team. Maybe they've got another Hallowed Haunting in their hand. Case of the Locked Hot House. And Zeus's Many Journeys. Sure. So I'm glad we got rid of Hallowed Haunting. I'll tell you that one. Otherwise, they would have a lot of stuff on the board right now. But no fourth mana for us means we'll drop Halana and Elena using Ruby. And we will smash with a hefty Reckless Stormseeker here. And they might just tump, chump with the 2-2 uh, two, two here. Okay, triple block? I don't know. We would have pretty much decimated their board. Okay, they take it. They go down to 9. Okay, do they have another way to, like, another ossification? It is Case of the Locked Hot House. Okay, so lots of sagas and opponent scoops it up. All right, on the play, with an incredibly strong opening hand here for our little Gruel aggro deck. No mole, but I think we'll go for the Kamano play this turn. Get this thing moving. 
Get a nice 2-2 two -two here on uh, turn three. Put it with an island. Okay, I'm glad we played the Kumano. Okay, no turn two play for us, so let's go for the Swift Spear. They've definitely got something in their hand. Wonder if it's a fading hope. No. Well, they might do, but they take the damage, go down to 17, demolition feel. Okay, we're just gonna keep smashing here with our cards. Play the Storm Seeker. If they counter this, so be it. Doesn't look like they are gonna, and they're already down to 10. Next turn we have the Code Breaker. We have Animist Might to hopefully give some prowess, and yeah, very quick victory there.